I know you guys don't want to hear it, but somebody has to say it, and that is that quality doesn't matter. There, I said it. My name is Damien Cooper, and welcome to Monkey Pick. So this is not a tutorial nor a review, this is basically pretty much a rant on my side but maybe it's of value to you when you think about your video production or even your photography production company. So what do I mean by quality doesn't matter? I'm not talking about that skill doesn't matter or the cinematography behind every video, the camera moves or even the ability to tell a story. No, all that matters and all that is what distinguishes you from other people in the industry. So what do I then mean by quality? By quality, I mean the whole discussion about 4K, about codecs, about 10-bit versus 8-bit, about color signs and all that kind of stuff. And let's keep in mind that all this is my opinion. As a professional filmmaker, I have to pay my bills and salaries and my rent and all that with making movies as well as photography. So that is all my opinion and my standpoint on the industry, but maybe there's a takeaway for you. And if you're a hobbyist and all you're focused on is creating great videos that have the highest quality ever, then maybe this video isn't for you. I'm talking about the business side as well as the hobbyist and trying to find a little bit of a balance between the highest quality, but also being economical. Economically? economical. So let's start off with an anecdote. So one of our biggest clients and best paying clients here in Vienna is a beauty clinic and we have a long-term contract with them that we're shooting several commercials for them and we, I think we already shot an image video as well as six or seven commercials for them on top of some other events and stuff. So what do we usually shoot with? We usually take our C200, we have a team of two or three people with different camera angles, we shoot in 12-bit RAW with different lights and you know, the whole shebang and everything. And they always loved our videos. So, but there was this one time during the summer where I had to spontaneously take off to Los Angeles and I had to take the um, Canon C200, but we already had two more commercials scheduled for the beauty clinic. So I put all my trust in Belle and she directed and shot everything by herself. She had the help of a PA, but she did basically all of it by herself. And only shooting with the 1DX as well as the 5D Mark IV, no lock profiles, no raw, just the embedded profiles with an 8-bit codec. Most of it was actually lit with available light other than the interviews and that's it. So she edited all of it and sent it to the client and the next time we saw the client they were like oh they're my superstars and the last two videos they were so great, they were so awesome, the best ones ever. So I mean one could say that Belle may just be a better cinematographer than I am but since we're shooting all of this together and we have a similar style I don't think that is the case in that particular um, job that we shot. So what is the point in shooting all that in raw and having huge file sizes with a team of three and you know all that when the client just doesn't see a difference and if they see the difference most of the time they're not even willing to pay for it so why have all that uh, equipment and you know stress about all that when it just doesn't make you more money and that is pretty much the point of the video. Of course, like we are movie lovers, we are TV show junkies and we are pixel peepers. But that is just us. That is not our clients that eventually pay our bills. So is it really necessary to get the extra RAID system, to get the extra fast computer, to edit these 4K RAW files on this more expensive camera? And the answer is most of the times it is not. We are a small production company, we even shot for clients like the UFC or we shot with NFL players, so we had some bigger clients in there, but none of those actually requested us to shoot raw. And when clients do, they most of the time want either a RED or an Aria Alexa, but then they really know what they want and usually they have the budget for it. But all of these day-to-day -day, one man, two man band jobs or even weddings, all that kind of stuff, clients really don't see the difference and they're not willing to pay for it. So the next time you want to upgrade to this next camera that is just better as the one before, you really have to think about, is it really worth it? And 
Then there's also the thing of where do all these videos end up? Because I had this discussion with a colleague of mine and you know, we exchange information a lot on the internet and he also has a C200 and he was shooting, no offense, a low budget music video and he sent me the photos, ah, oh, it's so noisy in the shadows, I really wanna have it crispy clean. And while he was sending me his footage, I was watching a really high production, multi-million dollar a Netflix show on my 4K OLED TV, which is the intended medium to actually watch that footage on. And the shadows just looked awful. Everything was noisy, it was compressed as f And you know, it just makes you think, like if these productions are meant for the actual consumer, that is me on my couch with a really high-end expensive TV, is really not looking that great, then what's the point for us to try to upload this in 1080p on YouTube where somebody is watching it on their phone while taking a shit? So you really have to keep that in mind because looking at our YouTube statistics, 95% of the people actually watch the videos on their phones. And if you keep that in mind that the best case scenario is that they actually watch it on their laptop and while they're preparing their dinner, then that all puts everything a little bit into perspective. I'm not saying you should just don't give a shit anymore and just put everything out there just the way it is and don't really color grade and you know whatever, but just make sure that you're not spending too much money on equipment if it's not paying off in the long run. Just rather go for usability and make your workflow easier instead of trying to get this little bit more resolution or a little bit more color grading opportunities in the end unless you have a big studio client paying for the actual quality upgrade. And again, this is just my opinion or my experience from working in this industry for a while now that most people are not as much of a quality junkie as we are and they can't even see the difference between the 4K, the 1080, and we're not even there yet when it comes to really 4K. Look at the Vivo top 10 charts music videos on YouTube. None of these is uploaded in 4K. And I was watching the new um, music video by Eminem, and I really liked it, but the quality was so bad because it was completely compressed into a 1080 file, uploaded, and you know, so it really makes you think, do you really need 4K? Does your client really need 4K? Think about that when being on the internet and bitching about that new camera just, just came out because it doesn't have this or that feature. Do you really need it? Do you get paid more for it? Think about it. And again, this is just my experience from working in this industry and my opinion. And let me know in the comments below if you actually agree with me and if you have similar situations than we had or if you're actually getting paid for your quality upgrades 100% of the time and actually spending so much more on a new camera is worth it every time. Let me know, subscribe, like, and I'll see you on the next one.